much for joining us. My name is Ami from Provision ISR. Together with me is David from our technical support. And welcome to our thermal camera solution webinar. And I've muted your microphone. Apologies for that. And if you have any questions, you can either write them on the chat or stay until the end of the seminar when we, uh, you're welcome to open your microphones and ask any questions you might have. In the meantime, you can ask them on the chat and we will ask on behalf of you as well. This seminar has been, is being recorded as well and a recording of it will be sent to you at the end of it. Um, and uh, let's, uh, let's start. By the way, the length of this seminar is about 45, 45 to 50 minutes. So as I explained today, uh, our main uh, uh, seminar for today is a thermal camera solution. We will divide it into two parts. The first part will be done by me for about 10 minutes when we will talk mostly about marketing and sales of the product. Um, and then um, David will demonstrate and explain more technical uh, features about the product itself. So to begin with, I would like to recommend you to have access to our to our uh, marketing shirt folder. If you don't have the link to get access to our marketing shirt folder, it is highly recommended that you will. Um, if you don't have it, you can write your email here in the chat. I will forward to you right now. If you do have it, you know what to search for. But let's see what we can get from it. Inside the marketing shared folder, basically we give access to all of our marketing capabilities, which you can access freely and get access to and download anything you wish, whether there are leaflets, banner for websites, uh, videos about solution, and different explanation about different solutions. Today, we're going to focus on the new product release. So there is a folder here called product releases. Inside of it, you will see that every time we launch something, we create a, a dedicated folder for it. And today, we're going to focus about thermal cameras. So here, you can see we have a folder called IP thermal cameras. Inside of it, you can find everything you need in order to promote, sell the thermal camera. From pictures, to email advertise, to leaflets, to logos, to magazine advertise, uh, posters for, uh, shop, for shops to put on the wall, product brief, which we will touch today, social media posts. So again, I'll, I'll just go in and we will have a look at some of the social media posts that you can download and use and put uh, in your own uh, social media calendars. Uh, text sheets, of course, videos, website banners, everything you need to promote and to learn about the solution. So today we're gonna focus a little bit about the product brief. And yeah, okay, we'll use the product. So in a nutshell, uh, for those of you that hasn't been used thermal camera before, uh, you should know that uh, we launched our thermal cameras around February, 2023. Uh, we launched two models to begin with. Today, we already have three models. We'll talk about the differences of those models. And just to explain a little bit about the technology, and David will explain a little bit more. But again, a thermal camera is a solution that we will use when optic lens or regular CCTV cameras cannot see. And even if they have IR and infrared and rainbow solution, a color at night solution or whatever it is, there are specific locations or specific weather conditions that the regular optic lens cannot create an image. For example, fog or bad weather or pitch dark night or bushes and trees and fences that bothering our uh, view, view of the camera. In that case, we will use thermal solution. Thermal can see 
around the clock, all weather condition, heat, cold, doesn't matter. She can pro produce an image, a thermal image, but still an image that we can count on and we can even perform analytic on. Into that solution, we also integrated two main provision ISR capabilities. One is the analytic, what we call in provision ISR, DD analytic, first generation, with the ability to do line crossing and stereal area. And as well, we added the smart alert, alert or the active deterrence technology, which means on board the camera, you have physical alert in the form of red and blue flashlights and in the form of a speaker that you can upload messages. David will show you some examples. White flashlight. Flashlight, sorry. White, the Where, color is white. Use the thermal cameras. So there are three main applications that we will use thermal camera. The first that comes in mind is of course the security application where we want to be able to identify human beings or car in thermal image. Again, weather conditions, bushes, trees, and so on. Uh, fog, whatever it is. In that case, we can use the camera in the thermal image to, to be able to identify with the DA, human or vehicle, different distances and so on. David will explain a little bit more about the distances in his, in his part. The second day application we can use our thermal cameras are fire detection. So yes, the, cam the, the thermal camera can detect a flame and alert when she detects such a flame. Which distance, what is the size of the flame? We'll talk a little bit about, about it more when we, we will get into the details, but there is a very clear uh, formula that you can use uh, to, uh, to know exactly which camera I should use, which model I should use according to the distance that I'm trying to identify fire detection or flame in general. And the third application that we can use is that temperature detection. Yes, since it's a thermal camera, it's measured temperature all the time. So we can use it for thermal detection. Where will I use it? Engines, for example. Well, we want to monitor an engine and we need to know when it heated up, we can where we want to measure temperature and server rack mount walls. We want to know if any one of our servers is heating up and temperature is rising and to get alert about it. This is another example. So like you see, other than security, we can also use it for fire detection and for temperature detection. David is going to explain and demonstrate most of those usage. Um, and of course, you can trigger different alerts. By the way, this is a product brief that you can find in, in that folder that we mentioned, but together with it, you have a leaflet and many other things. So again, we can activate alerts. What kind of alerts we can activate? First of all is alarm out, dry contact, onboard the camera. We can activate it audio alarm. We have a speaker, a physical sound that you can upload messages or using uh, predefined messages. We can activate it lightning alarm, strobe light on the on board the camera. We can take snapshot to the SD card. We can start recording on the SD card. We can emails, we can do emails, FTP, save to FTP, of course, push notification through the NVR. And the thermal camera work with all provision SR devices and platforms, VMS, NVRs, app, and so on. Um, and you also have some marketing taglines that you can use. So again, product brief or that folder in specifically is something that I recommend highly to use. If you don't have access to it, we'll be happy to give you one. Um, thank you. At that point, I will hand it over to David to some more deep knowledge in, in information and some demonstration. Go ahead, David. Thank you, Ami. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Nice to see you here with our uh, webinar. So uh, we're going to continue with, uh, with the thermal uh, camera. OK, I'm going to start with some simple explanation about the camera itself. 
uh, first I'm going to share the screen. So we're going to see it using a, the specification. A few words about the thermal camera. For those of you, those of you who doesn't know uh, what is the term, thermal camera, thermal camera is a camera that was designed to capture uh, infrared waves, which are radiated from objects. Every object that is above absolute zero is going to uh, uh, to have some infrared waves projected out of it. Absolute zero is minus 273 degrees Celsius, which means that that's a lot. So most of the materials in our world are a, a, have an emissivity of an infrared wave. This is our camera. By the way, Ami, can you tell me if you can see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, okay, perfect, good. So our camera, as you can see, it is um, equipped with two lenses. One of them is the optical lens, just like any other camera, meaning that this camera is capturing regular waves, regular uh, uh, light waves, and giving you the image that you all uh, used to see, to know. The other lens is uh, have a different kind of detector. It is a detector that is, uh, uh, that is speciality is actually to absorb these uh, infrared waves. This is how it can actually convert those waves into temperature. There is a different wavelength and the frequency based on the actual temperature of the object. This is how the camera can convert those waves into the temperature. So we have two lenses, one optical, one thermal. The camera is also equipped with a speaker. We cannot see it on this image. It is on the bottom of the camera. It is. It has a speaker. So basically the camera takes some uh, uh, features out of the active deterrence camera, which is equipped with a strobe light, white strobe light in this case, and a speaker, which will uh, alert you whenever there is an alert. And of course, that when we are talking about a thermal camera, those alerts are extremely important. There could be a fire, there could be something going on with our machine room, pipeline, or any other scenario. Uh, the, the cameras, the cameras um, a temperature range that it is capable of detecting temperatures is between, let's see it, it's right here, it's between minus 20 degrees Celsius until 150, plus 150 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to show you an image that we have uh, took when we tested this camera. Basically, we took some dry ice. Dry ice temperature is about minus uh, 40, 50, 60 degrees, depends on the environment, of course. So, so on the right side, you can see the thermal lens. Remember the camera have two lenses. One of them is thermal, the other is optical. The right one, the right uh, screen that we see here is the thermal lens. And uh, we can see that the deep black color that we can see here is actually the dry ice, which is inside the box. But even though uh, uh, the box is, of course, opened, and then, of course, we can see that the, the ice gives us a very dark color, which represents being represented in this uh, temperature, which is a minus 38 degrees. And on the contrary, we have a lighter, which is turned on and uh, it is reaching up to 181 deg uh, degrees Celsius. So the camera in one snapshot can give you a wide variety of temperatures, meaning that in other words, uh, this is a, labo a laboratory test, of course, but you can also take the camera and uh, install it on a place that has a lot of ice. And on the other hand, it will also capture a fire in case it is happening. Uh, a little bit more about the thermal uh, ability of the camera, we have this unit right here, which is a, a micron. Okay, the size of the pixels on the detector is eight until 14 microns. Microns is the size of the pixel, which is located on the detector itself. Uh, long story short, we want to get lower numbers. Whenever the number is lower, it means that the pixel is smaller, the size of the pixel on the detector is smaller, meaning that it gives you a better accuracy uh, 
measuring temperatures. Uh, okay, now about the detection, okay, about the detection distance. Well, before the detection distance, maybe it is better to uh, uh, it is better to show you a little bit uh, the fire detection, what 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 the camera is actually ca capable of doing. So we have here. I'm going to now log in into the camera itself. Okay, into the thermal camera. This is exactly the same kind of camera we just saw with the dry ice picture. We see two lenses, one of them to the right, one of them to the left. I can tell you that today is a very hot day in Israel. This is why we can see 71 degrees live. Um, okay, now the first, the first ability of the camera is of course the most, let's say binary one. It's either you have a fire or not. You want to detect if there is a fire so the camera gives you this ability. Um, the settings in order to do that in the camera are very simple. I'm going to show you a, a brief of this, uh, of this capability and then a recorded demonstration. Basically, it goes like this. We are enabling the feature in order to make the camera to uh, detect when there is a fire, we enable it. And then we actually determine what is going to happen once a fire was detected. So we can say, okay, we want to get a, an audio alarm from the camera. The camera speaker will uh, say something, whatever we choose from those preset messages. Of course, we can also add messages, recorded messages into the camera. A trigger light alarm. So the camera strobe will flash. It is a strong flashlight, which we can see from a distance. It can also tell you that okay, there is a fire somewhere, and of course the camera can send the the camera can send an email, okay? Can uh, record on the SD card, uh, send the recording to the FTP, and of course we can control on the fire detection sensitivity, how sensitive the camera is going to be to a fire, okay? In case the camera is installed in a very hot location in the desert. And uh, it might give you a false alarm because it is oversensitive to uh, high temperatures. So in that case, you will make the camera less sensitive to the heat, to the temperature, in order to actually give you a, an alarm only when a true fire is going on. Usually in most of the places, uh, the middle way is going to be the best way. Okay, we're going to put it on 50, which means that we're going to get a detection whenever there is a, an actual fire. Now. We're going to see how does that actually happen. So I'm going to play a video. Please let me know if the video is not fluent. Okay. Uh, what we can see here is a, a bunch of boxes. We can see it on the left side, a bunch of boxes on a pile, one at the top of each other. I'm going to run forward a little bit. Um, we can see that there is an area. It is marked in a yellow rectangle, which means that the camera is uh, measuring the temperatures inside it. We get three parameters from the camera. We get the maximum temperature inside this entire area. We get the average temperature and we get the minimum temperature. So minimum, maximum, and the average between them, between the minimum and the maximum. Now the fire is on its way. Okay, I skip it too fast. Take a look at the maximum, which is now 28, 29, 32. Okay, once we get a visual fire, first of all, we see the light, the flame symbol on the upper right screen. Okay, on the upper right side of the screen, we see a flame, which means that the camera is right now alerting for a fire. This is an actual fire. This is not just a high temperature, it's an actual fire. Uh, and also the flame is being surrounded by a small uh, frame, which you can see it is marked in a blue, I don't know if you can see it, a blue uh, frame around the flame frame around the flame. Okay. Also the camera is a um, uh, heavy, the strobe light is also flickering. You can probably see it due to the flickering of the screen, but maybe it's a uh, through zoom. So I'm not, I'm not sure if you can see it. Now the temperature reaches to 180. Once it is extinguished, of course, the temperatures are uh, uh, dropping. Okay. This is basically how the camera is dealing with a fire. Um, 
Okay. David, before you move to our to your second part, which is maybe temperature, talk about the flame size and the different and the distance. Sure. Sure. Okay, so at the moment we have two models, two camera models. We have a three millimeter, three millimeter cam thermal camera, and we have a seven millimeter thermal camera. Uh, the parameters between the two are changing because that they have a different um, a focal view. Okay, so the seven millimeter camera sees, has a, a, a wider, a narrower focal view, which means it can see. Uh, deeper, it's like it's a, a little bit in zoom, and a three millimeter has a wider field of view, which means that it sees from a longer distance, but has more uh, more uh, more coverage. Now, in every specification for a thermal camera, we can see these uh, parameters. We see the temperature detection distance, and we see the fire detection distance. It actually means what will be the distance or what will be the size of the flame that the camera is able to capture. So let's make it simple. When the camera is detecting a fire, okay, it is capable of detecting a fire from a distance of 11 meters, but the flame must be in a size of a 10 centimeter, 0 0.1 meter. So the minimum size for a flame would be 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter on 10 centimeter size. Not a very large uh, a flame, flame, not a very small, but those are the, the uh, this is the size with the, with, and the camera will be capable of detecting from 11 meters. Now the thumb rule goes like this. Once the size of the flame is doubled, then the distance that you can recognize this uh, fire is doubled as well. Okay, so if the flame getting bigger, if it is a 20 centimeter fire, then you will be able to view it from a, a 22 meters. If it's 10 times bigger, one meter, then you can see it uh, from uh, 100 meters, um, meaning that the camera will be able to detect it from 100 meter distance. Same, uh, same concept also for the temperature detection distance. Okay, the temperature de detection distance also relies on an object which projects heat or infrared waves in a size of uh, 10 centimeter. Uh, and the distance is shorter, 3.5 meters uh, for uh, temperature detection and not 11 meters like for fire. The reason is because the fire is much more hot than a, let's say a, a, a wheel of a vehicle that is moving and does get heater, does get hotter, but not uh, so much like a flame. Any questions about this uh, part? Not question, but I want to clarify maybe, because again, uh, David is showing here the spec sheet of a three millimeter lens. So let's take fire detection, for example, if we're talking about a flame, let's say we want to monitor an area which is 20 meter away from the camera. We want to know if there is a flame. And the flame in our eyes is 10 by 10 centimeters, okay? So if I need 20 meter away from the camera, my options are two. Either I will use the three millimeter lens and then I will be able to identify the flame only when it reaches 20 by 20 centimeters, if you understand the mathematics here, because 10 by 10 centimeters will be identified from 11 meters. I wanna see it from 20 meters. So around 20, around 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter, or my second option is to go with a narrow, narrow uh, uh, field of view camera. In this case, maybe the seven millimeter lens camera. Can you switch, David, to the seven millimeter lens? Yes, one moment. This, for the same flame, flame size, 10 by 10 centimeters, we can already see it in 24, 24 meters away. What about if I want to do it from 100 meter away? So uh, as I said in the beginning, we launched in February two models, three and seven millimeter lens. We just launched this month, 25 millimeter lens. So you can have a much longer distance to be able to identify flames or temperature or whatever it is. Go on, Dave. Thank you. Okay, the next part is the temperature detection. 
Okay, temperature detection is similar to the fire detection, but unlike the fire detection, which is a more yes or no situation, the temperature measurement detection is based on more accurate uh, findings that we want to get from the camera, meaning that if we have a place that is uh, tending to get heat, getting hotter, such as a, a machine room. We have a machine room and the machine room works should be between 30 to 60 degrees Celsius. We know that the maximum maximum temperature of this room is 70. Above 70 is going to be risky. So we can use the camera to place it in front of this machinery room and have the camera to alert us when there is a temperature above 65 degrees, above 70 degrees, you know, to get the when, the, when the room is getting to its limit, to the red line, then we want to get a, an email or a push message or a recording, strobe light, alert, whatever. Uh, okay, how do we do it? How do we actually do it? In order to get a, a temperature detection, we're going to get into the camera. Now we have, uh, of course, we can set all of those things either from the camera or from the NVR. I'm going to this, uh, uh, to demonstrate bo through both of them. So this is the camera. Right now we are connected to the camera. We can see that uh, this is the okay. This is the thermal. Uh, this is the thermal lens. When we are inside temperature measurement, we have a couple of settings inside. First of all, the basic ones we can choose. Those are basic uh, uh, settings also for the entire thermal uh, uh, feature. Uh, the temperature, what will be the temperature? Is it in Celsius or in Fahrenheit? Okay, how the camera is going to count. And the distance, is it going to be in meter and foot or foot? Why do we need to choose between the two? Uh, uh, be why, do we do we why do we even need a distance? You can, we're going to see it. Basically, it is because the different objects that we are measuring, their temperature, are located in different places. Okay, uh, we have a display max temperature, display minimum temperature. This is just to uh, to know if uh, to, to to get an, an overlay of those temperatures on the screen. Okay, to get the screen to show us this data, this information. A temperature bar is the we're gonna see it on the side of the screen. We have a small bar that shows us the maximum and the minimum uh, temperature on that uh, same uh, spot. Similar, similar to what we saw in this image that you see here, on the right side, there is a temperature bar. This is the one, okay? Okay. Uh, also, we can uh, click with our mouse on a part of the window and get that temperature, the temperature on that point that we pressed uh, using our mouse, this can be activated also here through the enable temperature reading by clicking open or close. We have emissivity and distance and reflectiveness. All of those three are an average. We're basically set up an average for the entire scene because all of those three uh, parameters also exist when we are setting up the rules. We can set up a rule for this area, a rule for another area, which we are going to see in a second. Uh, so basically, emissivity is a, is how an object a, is, is a projecting heat. Different objects, different mater materials project in a different way. So the human skin is not similar to the to a wood or to a metal panel. Okay, each one have a different emissivity. So uh, here we are going to set up the general emissivity for the scene because later we're gonna see that we can choose a different emissivity for every area. Uh, distance, what is the general distance from uh, from the object that we are measuring? We can, usually it is 25, let's do a 25. Okay, one moment and uh, a reflective, which is the average temperature in the in the area. Now, once we go, once we go to the area, once we go to the area, we will be able to see that we have here an area, which is uh, covering a part of the image. 
And inside the area, we see, maybe it is a little bit hard to see. I'm going to try to zoom in inside a little bit. It says minimum and maximum. And with the, with, the, with the temperatures that the camera is currently measuring inside this area. Now, this area was actually uh, created uh, using these rules on the bottom. We have one, two, three, four, until 10. We can basically create 10 different rules for uh, uh, in order to measure temperatures on different parts of the screen. Okay, so for example, for example, we can take a, we can see the first one is called engine room. We just gave it a name. Uh, the type is an area. We have three types that we can measure. We can measure an area, we can measure a line, and we can measure a point. Area is this. Okay, an area, we can basically draw an area. Okay, we can basically draw an area uh, on, the, on, the, on the screen itself. Okay, on the screen. The area can contain, one second. Okay, we deleted it. We can draw an area on the scene itself. I have one moment. I need to reopen the browser. Okay. Basically, the area is a the the area is an area where we can a, a capture an area inside the camera itself, and all of the area inside is going to give us the temperature. Okay, we're back inside. Okay, good. One moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's draw it once again. One. Two, three. Never mind. I have problems with the with the browser right now. So basically, the area uh, is similar to the sterile area uh, that we are doing in uh, DDA. We are basically capturing an area inside the the, the camera. Uh, we can also use it as a line. Okay, we can also use a line. Once I choose it, we can see here a line on the bottom of the screen. The line will also contain minimum, maximum, and average temperatures. Okay, as we can see here on the bottom. Uh, for every rule that we are choosing, I'm going to take a risk and uh, try to have a point here. Need to reinstall this browser. Okay. Uh, third point, the third uh, area is actually a point. Okay, a point measures the temperature in that small point that you, mar you can choose it on the screen. You can choose where you want it. And then once we say we press the save button, we're gonna get information on that specific on that specific point. It will give us the average temperature in that uh, specific point. Now, for each and every one of those rules, either it's a area or a line or a point, for any one of them, we can create a rule. Okay, we can create a rule. Of course, that first of all, we can create the emissivity. We can tell, okay, this area is uh, actually surrounding a, 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 an engine room. So we know that it is mostly metal, and uh, and we know that this is the this emissivity. Of course, we can Google what is the emissivity for a specific material. But we also have a, a table. We created a table which we can share later on. Also includes a basic settings for the thermal camera and also emissivity. So we specify the emissivity for that area. We specify the uh, estimated distance between this uh, area, okay, to the camera. 20 meters, 25 meters, 30 meters, never mind. Uh, and the average temperature of the area, not of this specific uh, object. Then we are going to go to alarm rule. This is where we actually setting up uh, what to do. And we are going to choose one of the above. Either we choose above a maximum temperature. You remember we have a minimum, maximum, and average temperature. So if you're looking to get notified when the maximum temperature is uh, is exceeded, then we're gonna choose this one. 
and we choose what is this temperature should be. So if the maximum temperature is above 65 degrees uh, or any other degrees that, degree that we are choosing, I will keep it on 65 because it is, it is 40 outside. Okay, 65, never mind 50, 150. Uh, then we're gonna get the we're gonna get the detection. Also, you can uh, you can choose other you can choose other choice from those uh, 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 from those options. So we can use to get uh, an alert when the temperature is below the maximum temperature. You can use uh, you can get a notification when the temperature is above the minimum temperature. Okay, so if you have an area and you have a minimum temperature, a minimum temperature, and you want to get a, a notification once this minimum is exceeded, then you can also do that. For example, a pool, which shouldn't be, or maybe a fish pool that shouldn't be get overheated. So we know that the minimum temperature is actually the water. If the water is getting too hot, the fish might die. So you want to get a notification once this uh, temperature exceeded. So every, okay, every, a uh, rule here has its own uh, purpose the uh, okay we can go on the on the rest which are above average temperature the average is the difference between the minimum and the maximum below the average and above or below the temperature difference meaning that uh, if you have what is what will be the difference between the maximum and the minimum temperature if the difference between the maximum and the minimum uh, exceeding something then we can choose what will be the number then of course we will get a we will get a notification or if it is below okay if we if the difference between the minimum and the maximum temperatures measured are uh, below x then we're going to get a, a notification okay um okay next Next, we're going to see a, a demonstration on an NVR, one moment. No. Okay. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see no I should open on IE. Uh, we're going to get a we're going to test a notification, we're going to demo a, demo a notification based on this uh, uh, temperature temperature that is uh, above above a maximum. Let's get a, a, a notification when something is getting too hot than than needed. So by the way, right now we are inside the NVR uh, interface. Okay, this is the web interface of the NVR, and we're going to wander into the analytics. We will choose. Uh, we will choose the camera, thermal camera. The camera that we saw before, okay, was the was a camera that that installed and outside. Of course, in order to demonstrate it, we're gonna use a, a camera which is located right here inside. So I will choose this camera. Okay, okay, this is us. So we're gonna go to the temperature detection. By the way, anything that we saw before that we did with the inside the camera itself can also be done using the, okay, can also be done using the NVR. So right now we are in the temperature detection. We can see that also the fire detection is right above. Uh, so temperature detection, this is the image. Hello. And uh, let's do it. So we want, let's do it again. So we have, uh, we gave it a name. The name is boiler, for example, the type is area. This entire green area represents the where the temperature is going to be measured. Emissivity, distance reflected, and what is the rule? The rule will be high temperature is greater than X, and then we determine the X. So the X is 40 degrees. Once we have a, a higher than 40 degrees Celsius, then we are going to get a notification. So let's go into the, uh, let's see how to do it. I'm going to go to the live display. Okay, 
this is the live display. Now I'm going to turn on the light right now. Let's make it mainstream. Okay, so we see that uh, there is a lighter in my hand. Once I turn it on, I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a fire alarm uh, detection and the white lights are blinking. You can see that the entire image is right now uh, lit in white. You can see it, right? I mean, can you see that the the you can see a flickering light. Flickering light. So this is actually the strobe light from the camera, which is which is right now being uh, uh, being radiated, being uh, not radiated, but uh, uh, strobing to us, flickering. Okay. Now, this is an example for how you can use the camera with uh, multiple other uh, uh, scenarios, of course. Um, okay. Now, the hot the hotness of the of the object is showing to us ex expressed in different colors okay so if i will go to the options that we have related to this uh, to this camera okay we're going to see that uh, we can change those colors in this case we call it in the sentence meaning that white white is hot Okay, so we can see that the hot color is being represented by white. We can change it to black. Okay, whatever black is hot, of course, you can choose whatever is, uh, is suiting to you. Of course, the color that you are going to see here is the same color that is going to be recorded on the, okay, on the, on the playback itself. Okay, uh, good. Now, Another thing that uh, I'm going to first talk about it really briefly, uh, for those, those of you who are new to uh, Provision ISR, is the capability of uh, getting analytics. So our cameras are capable of detecting human beings, vehicles, and also count. Okay, they can also count, they can also do a phase detection, many different kinds of analytics. So this camera, the thermal camera, is the uh, borrowing those abilities from multiple cameras active deterrence with the light and the speaker and the dta with the uh, sterile area and line crossing and people counting and also phase detection the thermal camera can also do phase detection so we're going to see now a, a little bit by the way we can see here on the spec sheet what are the capabilities regarding analytics from the camera but we're going to enter into an nvr um uh, one sec now i need it in ie mode okay okay so sorry a few more seconds Okay, um, my goal right now is to get a, a to show you how the camera is a, a showing us analytics. Okay, so we're gonna see some analytics, uh, and then we will see the camera contrast at night compared to the same camera actually on optical lens. We can see that the image is much clearer than an optical, especially at night. This is the idea of the thermal, uh, not not only. Okay, not not only the the fact that it is capable of giving us alerts, but also better visuality in some cases, especially for environmental uh, conditions like uh, fog, mist, uh, mist fog or or rain, heavy rain, which will be harder for a regular camera to detect a human being, um, and also night, just simple night time, the, the thermal camera will give you better uh, contrast uh, from a long distance. So I'm going to now. One second, let's choose the thermal camera, both of them. Well, once we add the camera to an NVR, this is a question that is again getting asked frequently. The NVR needs to give away two different channels. Okay, the thermal camera has two lenses. Basically, it is added to the NVR like two cameras. One of them is the optical lens, the other is the thermal lens. So right now we are going to conduct a search from uh, let's say this uh, this uh, week let's say 
from uh, the 12th okay till the till today today okay good for uh, humans yes okay so we're gonna see some results okay so we're gonna see some results for uh, uh, for humans okay this is this is a simple result okay the regular analytic method that we are using to search we see a human being right uh, uh, we can see that he's walking around now let's try to get a result from the middle of the night one second this is seven in the morning let's go for a uh, you know what let's go to the regular playback Okay, thermal camera, and let's search. Uh, let's search. Okay. Uh, Second. Okay. This is a comparison for, okay, for a, a the thermal camera which is on the right. It's not really night, uh, but uh, we can see the difference between how the camera is giving us the image to the uh, to the optical lens, okay, of the same camera. Now I'm going to show you something a little bit different maybe now which is, uh, let's see, it was the fourth, one second. Okay, this is actually a different kind of image. We're gonna see here, this is at night, three o'clock in the morning. We see a motion detection from the optical lens. Uh, the image itself actually shows us, you can see a small cat, okay, walking around. The cat generated a motion, okay, on the optical lens. It's still a pretty little area, but you can see the difference clearly how the cat looks like on this camera, on the thermal lens, compared to the optical lens. The optical lens, the cat is black. If he's walking on a back background, he's barely visible. But on the thermal camera, we can see him clearly. And now he's gone. But uh, this is the idea of the, of the thermal lens, because it doesn't care what is the scene. It will, it will show us an image and also detect analytics once, of course, there is a human being or a, or a vehicle, uh, regardless to the environment. Okay, it won't see through walls, but it will see with uh, very harsh weather conditions, with uh, leaves or trees that are uh, flying in the air or whatever. It is basically not uh, subdued to the, those uh, uh, to those factors, which can uh, really. Yes, Sammy. <laughs> can you explain us the distance, the effective distance for analytic human beings and vehicles and thermal image? Yes. Yes. Okay, so back to the spec sheet. Back to the spec sheet. We can see that the, uh, the spec sheet is equipped with also uh, two parameters, which are DRI, detect, recognize, and uh, identify. Uh, there are two parameters, one, one for human and one for vehicle. Long story short, when we try to, when we want the camera, the thermal image, we are right now on the thermal lens parameters. So if we are expecting from the camera to detect a human being, on the thermal lens, then we should install the camera no longer than 17 meters away from the object. Okay, 15, 16, 17 meters. More far than this, uh, this distance might be, uh, we might cause for false detection or no detections, uh, okay, through, this, uh, through the thermal lens. Now, those distances are changing. That is for the three millimeter lens model. If yeah, you, want to, so, you can go yeah. with a seven. Yes, if you want to get a longer distance for human, for example, you can go to the seven millimeter. Now I'm going to the seven millimeter uh, thermal lens, the, the camera, 
and we see that the distance is uh, longer. Now it is 36 meters for a human and 112 meters for a vehicle, while on the three millimeter, it is 51 meters for a vehicle. So the distances are changing. It is all by, depends on the, on the location that you're going to install the camera. Uh, okay, yes. Now, I will show a couple of more uh, uh, analytic results for human just to show the, okay, the uh, human detection, okay, by this lens. Because, and also for a, also for a vehicle. So uh, let's take a look. First of all, of course, we can see the image and we can see the, we're going to see the playback right now. This is the playback. We can see someone that is walking and uh, was entering into the into this uh, area. It he was detected. This person was detected and uh, was recorded on the on the NVR. Now uh, we need to remember that the thermal lens is not working the same like the optical lens. So it is not working on on regular wave uh, uh, light waves. Uh, it's working differently on an infrared uh, uh, waves, which are being captured also when there are other things that can, uh, uh, you know, make a disturbance between the camera to the object. Same thing for vehicle. If I will go and search for vehicles on the thermal camera, then we're going to get those uh, detections as well. Okay, let's see it. We can see here a truck that is going inside. Let's see it a little bit bigger. Okay, so there are also detections and uh, for also for a vehicle and also for uh, humans. Okay. Um, Yes, now you can also, last thing, last point, uh, you can also gather statistics, okay, based on those uh, based on those objects. So you know that you had a, a vehicles that were captured in the camera, in the lens, you want to get some statistics. This is not uh, something that is uh, only belongs to the thermal camera. Of course, it is a, a capability by the NVR, uh, but you can also, okay, you can also take a, a detection from the thermal camera, and then you will be able to see sterile area. You will be able to see how many vehicles were in different hours, how many vehicles were detected in different hours. And also you can do the same for a month. Okay, how many vehicles were detected in a, in a certain day of the month, a certain day, a, in a certain day in the week, and uh, et cetera. Okay, Ami, should I talk about uh, the settings of the DDI or uh, no need for now? Um, for those of you that would like to stay, we'll be happy to do it. Thank you very much, David. Can you close it? Okay, close the screen. One moment. Okay. We're gonna, first of all, thank you very much, David. We are staying You're welcome. here. For minutes to answer a question I'm going to stop the recording so for those of you that have to leave thank you very much for joining us this recording will be sent to you so you can view it again or share it with someone else and that's it for now thank you very much